Hi, welcome to a 50 minute vinyasa practice. My name is Kaylee. When you're ready, you can meet me in child's pose. Take a moment if you need to gather your props or your drink or anything. I always press play on videos before I'm actually ready. So it takes me a minute to settle in. And while you settle into your space and come into child's pose, just to note this practice is specifically about opening the heart and the hips. So we'll spend some time kind of breathing into some deeper stretches for those parts of the body, but we'll also spend some time kind of stabilizing and strengthening those areas. Everything works in cycles, everything works in rhythms. So it's not to say that like there's a preference on having an open container all the time. We want to be able to kind of go with the flow and find that cycle, just like there's love and loss. There's birth and death, night and day, summer and winter. We have opening and we have closing. So meet me in child's pose. Gentle hip opener, bringing the knees a little bit wider than your hips. Walk your hands forward. Maybe you let the forehead drop down if that feels comfortable. You can always slide a pillow underneath your forehead if not. And then just take a few grounding breaths. Noticing the sensation of stretch, perhaps through the hips and lower back or spine. Just another moment here. Might feel good to nod your head gently side to side, massage across the brow, release any tension there. Notice if you feel a little space in the back of the neck if you do that. And go ahead and slide forward to your hands and your knees with your shoulders right over your wrists and your knees underneath your hips. Let's circle the shoulders over the wrists a couple times in each direction. As you move here, so switch directions there, stay really long in your lower back. Come through the center, round your spine toward the ceiling, tuck your chin toward your chest, and really press down into your hands. Let the shoulders drift toward the ears. Stay in your cat pose, finding this rounding in your spine. Take a big breath into the space between the shoulders, upper back. As you exhale, come into cow, drop the chest down, take the chin up, tilt the tailbone up. So we're moving with a different breath pattern today. Cat pose, round your spine as you breathe into the space behind your heart. See if you can use your breath to find some opening there. And then cow, as you exhale, imagine the heels of your hands gliding toward your knees a bit. Two more times, inhale, find cat, press into your palms. Exhale, cow. Inhale, find cat, biggest breath into the back of the shoulders. And then cow pose, tuck the toes under here. Actually, you can choose if you want the toes tucked or not. I want my toes tucked. I'm gonna kick the left leg, kick the right leg back. Ooh, we'll get it together here. Kick back to your right leg. And then bring your right toes off the mat to your left. Maybe they stay on the mat, but over past the left side of your left foot or shin here. You can keep the hands down, or if you choose, reach the right fingertips forward, finding a big side body stretch, breathing into that opening through the right underarm if you've got that arm reaching forward, and the outer edge of the right hip and the right side of the waist. Nice long inhale. Right hand under your right shoulder, bring your right knee outside of the right arm, maybe outside of the elbow. And then kick that leg back to the left, look over your left shoulder, take a breath in. Bring that right knee to the right elbow as you breathe out. Two more like that. Inhale for your side body stretch. Exhale, squeeze in for your right side waist. One more time, breathe in. Keep it squeezed in toward your right elbow as you exhale. I'm gonna turn a little bit to the side. You're gonna kick your right leg out to the right, straight away from the hip. So we'll turn to the side here. And then press your hips back toward your left heel. So you're coming into like a half of the child's pose. You might drop the head down. Feel into the stretch in the inner right thigh, the outer right hip. 
two big breaths, letting the breath go in and create some space in any pockets where the muscles or the joints feel tense. And then pull back forward to the hands and the knees. Inhale, swing that right leg all the way around to the left again. This time, bring your right knee behind your left knee. Separate the ankles and the feet a bit as you walk your hips back between your heels for cow face pose. Reach your arms up here. Lengthen through the sides of your body. Root down through your sit bones. Big breath in. Bend your elbows, find a goal pose or maybe a W shape. Pull the chest through as you drag the arms back. Maybe you interlace your hands at your lower back here. Take a breath in. And then keep that mind as you bow your chin toward your chest. Keep the bind. Bend it back, then lift the chest up. Tip the chin up, the knuckles drag down toward the back of your mat as you breathe in. Bring your hands to your heart, find a nice neutral spine here. Reach the arms up on the inhale. We're gonna take a twist to the left. So bring your right hand outside of that top knee. Left fingers can trail back behind you. Breathe into the twist, breathe into the length in your spine. We'll take the eyes forward as you breathe in. We're going to unravel all of that. Shift forward, hands down, untangle your knees. Maybe wipe your hips side to side, narrow knees here. And then move through that kind of stretching sequence on the other side. So bring your right knee back underneath your right hip and then kick the left leg back. Look over your right shoulder, left toes drop down to the right. Stay there, maybe you tent the left fingers. Stay there, maybe you reach the left arm forward, finding a side body stretch. So wherever you found the side body stretch, even if that left hand's down, you can breathe into it. Breathe into the left side of your waist. Maybe bias the breath into the left lung. Long inhale. Left hand under left shoulder, left knee, left elbow as you exhale. Three more. Inhale, find your side body stretch. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, look over the right shoulder. Exhale, squeeze to that left elbow. One more time, breathe in. Left knee, left elbow, hold it there. Kick the left leg straight out to the left and then lower that left foot down as you start to gently shift your hips back toward your right heel. And soften the muscles around your mouth and your eyes. And just tune into the sensation in your left leg, that stretch, inner and outer thigh and hip. With your next in-breath, slide forward and then sweep the, the left leg back behind the right, crossing the knees. Give me one of those days, thinking your hips back between your heels here. Probably feel quite a lot of sensation in the outer edges of the hips. Reach the arms up. That's exactly what we're looking for. Bend your elbows, find that goal post shape, and then pull the arms back. Let the chest pull through. So it's almost like you're finding a back bend here. Actually, you are finding a back bend, right? Interlace your hands at your lower back. Take another breath in. And then bow forward with that bind. Keep the bind, inhale into another back bend. Let the knuckles drag down toward the back of the mat, tilt the chin up. And then bring your hands to your heart, nice and neutral spine. Close the eyes for a moment here. And set up an intention for your practice. Maybe just committing to working with your body, meeting yourself exactly where you are in this moment. So never forcing anything, but kind of exploring those boundaries that the body has and being really present with them so that you're not forcing or fighting, but really working with your breath, your muscles. Blink the eyes open on an inhale and reach the arms up. Take your twist to the right, left hand outside of that top knee, right fingertips tent back behind you so that you can find all of that length in every one of your vertebra. Maybe you look back over your right shoulder. 
Look forward, take a breath in, and then slide the hands forward, untangle your knees, move around a little bit in any way that you need here. It could be cat cow, it might be kind of wagging the hips around side to side. When you're ready, tuck the toes under, find downward facing dog. A couple deep breaths here to land in your down dog. Feel your fingers spread out, press down through the base of your thumb and your index finger. Long through the arms, long through the spine, maybe bend the knees to find more space in the lower back here. Give your head a gentle shake, gentle nod. And then bring the big toes close together at the back of the mat. You're still in down dog, but you've got a little less distance between the feet. Right leg comes up. Bend your right knee, open through the right hip, find that external rotation. Maybe it feels good to circle the right ankle or wiggle the right toes, or even draw some big circles with your right knee. So as you draw those big circles with your right knee, if you choose to do so, you're massaging the right hip socket, that femur is moving around. Switch the direction of whatever circles you're making, whether it's ankle or knee. Kick the right leg back with your next breath in. And then step the right foot through between your thumbs, drop the back knee down, lengthen out through your back leg. Maybe you slide the left foot back a bit, let the hips melt down. You can stay here or bring your hands to your right thigh. Lift the belly away from the right leg. So you're finding a bigger stretch in the front of the left hip. Stay here or reach the left arm up. Maybe start to find more of a back bend, reaching that left arm back, tilting your eyes upward. Big inhale. Bring the left hand down, reach the right arm up, keep your back knee down, but reach the right arm back. Maybe you bend the left knee and catch that foot for a bind. Push into your left hand, whether you've caught the right foot or, or not, the left foot or not. Press into your left hand, let the chest bend open here. Long breath in. Release the back foot if you caught it. We're gonna take a wide straddle. So tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, pivot your toes toward the left side of your mat. You might pigeon toe the feet a little bit here. Let the chest fold forward, hinging through your hip creases. It's a great place to shift the weight from foot to foot or to bend into one knee or the other. Alternately, it might be a place where today you just choose to find a nice static stretch. Keep the heels down, but start to tip gradually more and more weight toward the balls of your feet. Feel the shift in the hips as you do that. Now walk your hands toward your back foot. You might even bring the right hand toward the left ankle and then inhale the right arm up or the left arm up, oh goodness. <laughs> inhale toward the back of the mat. Maybe we'll use directional cues instead of right and left today. Sweep the hands toward the top of the mat. Step back to plank pose and then lower down to a count of four. Three, you can drop the knees first if you like. Two and one find a wide arm cobra walking your fingertips off the mat to the sides come onto the tops of the feet press into the fingertips but lift the palms up so you're just kind of pushing finger pads down like you're making fingerprints on the floor next to you five cobra roll-ups here inhale as you lift shoulders drift toward the spine exhale as you lower back down maybe the forehead just gently taps the mat four more times breathe in Breathe out. Inhale up for three. Exhale it back down. Two more on your own, and then we'll meet in the child's pose. Yeah, the hands under the shoulders, keep the knees grounded as you send your hips back towards your heels. Take a big breath here in through your nose, pausing at the top of that inhale, feel the stretch. Open mouth, exhale. 
Pull forward, back to hands and knees, tuck the toes under as you breathe in, and then down dog. We'll move through that warm up on the left side. Inhale your left leg, bend the knee, find some external rotation there. And then you know your options, find some movement in the top foot or ankle, or maybe move your left knee in some circles, just checking in with the left hip socket there. Whatever circles you're making, switch the direction. Notice any difference? I got a little uh, pop on that direction. So just kind of getting really granular about how your body feels. Kick the leg back from a place of curiosity and not judgment. Step your foot forward between the thumbs. Drop your back knee. Maybe you keep the fingertips tented if that feels right today, or you can bring your hands toward your left thigh. Untuck the right toes if you can, so you're stretching that whole line of fascia, that whole front line of connective tissue that moves up the top of the right foot and through the ankle and shin all the way up into the hip flexor. And keep the left hand on the left leg, right arm comes up, finding a back bend here. Lift your belly away from your left thigh, but let the hips continue to melt forward. Breathe in, bring the right hand down, sweep the left arm up, press the right hand down to find lift and space in the chest as you reach the top arm back, maybe bend your back knee, catching the foot. I'm realizing there's a bit of a glare. Mm -hmm. We'll just work, we'll go with it today. Breathe in, find a little bit more space through the breath. Release that back foot, tuck the back toes, find your wide straddle, pivoting your toes toward the right side of your mat, dropping the head down. Deep breaths here. Anytime you let the head drop below the heart, it's pretty kind of calming for the nervous system. Walk your hands toward your back foot. Sweep the top arm up and open, finding a twist toward the back of the mat. Bring some awareness into the lower back. So notice if you're ramping through the low back, can you create space there? Use your breath to lengthen from your tailbone all the way through the crown of the head. And then sweep the hands to the top of the mat with the toes forward, high plank. From high plank, come into chaturanga this time. You can use the knees or a mat. I'm going to opt knees down because we're going to hold chaturanga and then come back to high plank. Two more. Chaturanga, knees lowered or lifted. High plank. One more time. Strong arms, chaturanga. Maybe you tap the toes and lift the knees if you had them down. Flip to the tops of the feet. Straighten the arms as you find upward facing dog here. Pausing and up dog Look from one shoulder to the other shoulder. Stretch from your belly button all the way up to the chin as you breathe in. Downward facing dog. Take a couple deep breaths here. You feel the arms really warmed up after that. When you're ready, lift the heels look forward and then walk to the top of the mat. At the top of the mat, come straight into your halfway stretch with your feet hips distance. Breathe in. And then find ragdoll just for a few breaths, catch the crooks of the opposite elbows. Maybe you give your head a gentle little shake or nod again. You start to notice if you have these patterns where the body holds tension. You see if you can help yourself out by releasing some of that when you become aware of it. Release your hands to your shins, half lift on the in breath. And then slowly pull, roll all the way up to standing, sliding your hands against your legs. Sweep the arms up, take a breath in, root down through your feet, hands to your heart as you empty. Arms up on the inhale, bow forward on the exhale. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Plant the hands, step back to high push up, rock forward, lower to chaturanga or to your belly. Cobra or upward facing dog without rushing, finish the inhale. Downward facing dog as you empty. Stay here, take just one big breath in. 
Long breath out. Lift the heels Look forward on the inhale. Empty your breath and then step, walk, or hop to the top of your mat. Halfway stretch again, breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out. Unroll with the inhale, find the stretch, find the space. And then bow right back down as you empty. Feel the contrast there. Halfway lift, heart open, breathe in. Plant the hands, step back, low push up as you breathe out. Upward dog, again, the heart opens, inhale. Downward dog as you empty. We're gonna move through one more round of sun salutation A, that sequence that we've done. The key with this sequence is being really aware that we are working in a pattern. There's a pose that you have an opening with the in-breath and a pose that you have a little bit more of a closing or coming back to midline with the out-breath. So focusing on that, take a breath in as you lift the heels, look forward, empty the breath, engage your core, step or hop to the top. Half lift, heart open, breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out, closing in. Unroll with the inhale, lengthen and lift. Take it back down as you exhale. Pose and counter pose, half lift, breathe in. Low push up, step or float it to the back. Inhale up, find the space in the chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. From down dog on your next in breath, pick the right leg up. We're going to build a flow. Step the right foot forward behind the right wrist, spin your left heel down. Come up into warrior one, squaring your hips toward the top of the mat, squaring your chest forward. Keep breathing down to the base of your right big toe. And then bend your elbows, find that bold pose shape again, strong in your back leg so that left hip flexor is still pulling forward gently, but you're drawing the arm bones back, tipping the chest up. Keep the back bend, but interlace your fingers, pound at your lower back. Inhale as you open the hips a bit, find a warrior two base here, and then exhale it into humble warrior. Letting your right shoulder slide toward the inside of your right knee. Drop the head down if you can. If you're looking back between your legs or maybe up toward your belly button. Now use your breath to calm your mind and to support your body. This is an intense asana, an intense pose. Got one more breath here. As you exhale, release the left hand down, spin the left heel up, right arm up for dragonfly twist. So we're in a strong dragonfly this time. Hug the legs toward one another and then hug the hips toward each other as well. So coming toward center, called Mula Bandha, root lock. Stay here or tent the left fingers. Continue to open through the chest. See if you can use your breath to find more space in this twist. One more big inhale, perhaps the eyes pop up toward your top thumb. We're gonna find extended side angle. Bring your right forearm to your right thigh, pivot your back heel down, and then the left arm can come up or forward, or maybe it catches the left hip. In side angle pose, spin your sternum toward the left side of your room, maybe even starting to take your sternum up. We're going to backstroke the left arm, so sweep that left arm back as you inhale, bring your hands to your heart, pivot the toes toward the left, spin the heels in, find horse. So I'm going to uh, encourage a little bit shorter stance in horse today so that you can press the knees out. And we've got a little, some fun options here. So little pulses, pulse down for two, one, straighten the legs, squeeze the legs. Pulse down, knees toward toes for two. One, straighten the legs and squeeze. Three more like that. Pulse down for two. One, straight leg, squeeze. Two more. Down, down, 
up. Last time, down, down, up. Pivot the toes toward the top of the mat. Find lightning warrior. So you're pivoting the toes down, sweeping the arms by your sides. Option to have the left heel lifted or down, whatever you feel more steady with. We're gonna bring the left knee up, sweep the arms up, breathe in, and then find lightning chair at the top. Bend the knees, hinge the hips. Reach forward, chair pose on the inhale. Bow as you empty. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Vinyasa, however you wanna to get to downward facing dog. Feel the contrast as you inhale and exhale. We'll take that through on the left, left leg lifts, breathe in. Step behind the left wrist, right heel spins down, warrior one on this side. Maybe you choose to find a drishti this time, setting your eyes to one spot. And then just be mindful if the gaze gets really tight and intense, see if you can find focus without a lot of tension, right? So I've been thinking a lot lately in this busier season of life, like, is it possible to be productive without stressing out? Hopefully. Hopefully it's a matter of remembering, right? Where we're holding unnecessary tension, Maybe taking things a little bit more lightly, but still applying our effort and our energy toward our goals. Breathe in, bend your elbows, find that expansion through the chest, and then stabilize that expansion, particularly through your back leg. Interlace your hands at your lower back, then open for warrior two legs with a bind as you breathe in, maybe the chin tilts up. Humble warrior, slide your left shoulder down toward the inside of your left knee. Humble warrior is always where I remember Ujjayi breath. So little constriction in the back of the throat, exerting just a bit of control over the flow of energy, your life force, your prana, drawing those inhales deep into your body. With every exhale, letting go of something unnecessary that you're gripping or holding. One more breath. Right hand down, drag and fly to a spin your back heel up, reach the left arm up. And then come back to your breath as a way to facilitate more space from inside of the stretch. So we can crank on the body externally sometimes that gets us where we think we want to go, but can you match that? Can you support that from the inside out, deepening your breath, finding space as you breathe, maybe floating the right hand. The body's not interested on that on this side. Take one more long inhale. Extended side angle, left forearm, left thigh, right heel pivots. You've got options in your extended side angle. So right hand either hooks the right hip, reaches straight up, or stretches straight forward. Either way, feel the rib cage rotating toward the right, maybe even spiraling toward the ceiling. Take a breath in, backstroke your right arm, and back into a course with your hands at your heart. Option one is the same thing we did on the other side, little pulses down and then straighten the legs. Option two, little plyometric option, pulse it down for two, Pop the feet together and then back out, pulse for two. In and out, pulse for two. In and out, pulse for two. Keep going. You could be pulsing and straightening, or you could be pulsing with our little hop. For five, for four, for three, for two, and one. Find lightning warrior toward the front. Lightning warrior or crescent. Lightning crescent. Shift the weight to the front foot. Right knee is going to come up. One legged mountain as you breathe in. Feet hip distance, lightning chair as you breathe out. Interlace your hands at your lower back. Bring the chest forward. Lift the chin upward. And then keep the bind as you fold forward. Big breath in here. 
Maybe lion's breath as you exhale, stick your tongue out, cross your eyes. Release the palms to the chins, find a halfway stretch, not much of a break. Plant the hands, step or hop back to Chaturanga. Inhale, take the back bend, open the heart. Exhale, close it to downward facing dog. Right leg up, breathe in. Right foot steps forward, breath in motion a little faster this time. Warrior one on the in breath. Bend your elbows as you exhale. Interlace the hands and open the hips, breathe in. Humble warrior, breathe out. Stay in humble warrior for the inhale. Release the left hand down, drag and fly twist. Stay in drag and fly twist for the inhale. Find extended side angle as you exhale. Reach the top arm forward, breathe in. Backstroke that top arm, come back into horse. Same thing, two little pulses, straighten the legs. Two little pulses, little hop in and out. We're here for five, for four, for three, for two. Find a horsing one, pivot forward, Lightning Crescent or Lightning Warrior. Inhale, left knee lifts. This time we're gonna find the answer. Catch the left foot with your left hand. Start kicking into that left hand, feel the quad stretch. Then maybe you start to kick that left leg back. So Dancer has a lot going on, but there's two things that you can think about and two different directions that you can take it for your body. One is this big quad stretch through the left leg. If that's what you're after today, if you're after that hip um, extension, you can point the left knee straight down, tuck the tailbone a little bit, and then start to explore what's going to give you the best sensation of lengthening through the left quad and the left hip flexor. Other option is to focus more on the back bend element. For some folks, you might choose to bring your hands to your left foot. Finding a bind there, really drawing open through the front of the ribs. Whatever variation you took, one more long inhale. Stay for the exhale, release the left knee forward, reach the arms up as you breathe in. Lightning chair as you breathe out, interlace your hands, big inhale. And then bow forward as you empty. Release palms to shins, take a breath in. And then flow through your vinyasa. I'm warming up. I'll meet you in downward facing dog. You might get an extra cycle of breath there while I take a layer off. From downward facing dog with your next inhale, let's take the left leg up. Step the left foot forward. Warrior one. Breathe in. Bend your elbows as you empty. Interlace at the lower back, with it open on the in-breath. And then bow forward, exhale. Stay here, take a breath in. Set up dragonfly as you breathe out. And reach long through the left arm, inhale. Extended side angle, exhale. Sweep the top arm forward, breathe in. Backstroke it into your horse. Knees out, toes out, two little pulses, straight legs, or a little jump. It's totally okay if that jump is not for you, especially if you already do some sort of high impact work. Not a big fan of it in my own life, but I have to mix it in in little doses here and there. For three, for two, Lightning Warrior Crescent in one. Pivot forward, arms back, breathe in. Right knee lifts, reach the arms up. Dance or pose on this side. Come back to your breath. Set your drishti, your focus at one spot without clenching your teeth. And then choose if you're up for more of a quad stretch today or more of a back bend and heart opener. Another variation, I'm not sure if my body's up for it, of that heart opener is to point the elbows up. Seems like it's a yes today. And really draw the shoulders down and toward each other. Not so much down as toward each other. So think about bringing the shoulder blades toward the spine. 
elbows in line with shoulders. Whichever variation you chose, take a big breath in, bring the right knee forward, inhale the arms up, lightning chair on the exhale, interlace, lift the chest, breathe in, and then bow forward as you breathe out. Release the hands, we're gonna take that through one more time, inhale. Vinyasa, without rushing anything, so still really deliberate with how you're moving your body and how you're breathing. From down dog, right leg, inhale it up. Exhale, step forward. Warrior one, breathe in. Bend your elbows, breathe out. Interlace on the inhale, spin open through the hips and the heart. Humble warrior on the exhale. Stay here, breathe in, tuck the chin. Drag and fly twist as you breathe out. Find your full expression, inhale. Extended side angle, prep as you exhale. Left arm stretches, breathe in. Backstroke the left arm. Horse pose, same thing. Little pulses, straighten. Little pulses, up in and out. For five. For four, you meet your body where it's at. Last three. Last two. And one, lightning warrior or lightning crescent. Take a breath in. Left knee lifts as you empty. Dance or pose, catch the left foot or ankle. From here, we're gonna add on. We're gonna take a standing figure four. Bring the left knee forward, hands to your heart. Slide your left ankle over the top of the right thigh and then send the hip creases back. Another option here, so if you happen to have like a chair nearby or something that you can grab hold of with your hands, you can use that as a counterbalance. So you're focusing less on the balance element and more on that opening through the left hip. So bigger back, you hinge the hips. Like think about trying to close a door with your butt, a door back behind you, right? The more stretch you're gonna get for the left hip and thigh. Two more deep breaths. Maybe you sink it a little bit lower. One more here, breathe in. Stay low as you breathe out. Left knee and arms up on the inhale. Lightning bear or chair as you exhale. Interlace, breathe in, quads on fire here. Bow forward as you breathe out. Hands to shins, one more side, inhale. Chaturanga, step or jump it back, kind of a little springiness. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Left side, breathe in. Step forward, breathe out. Warrior one, inhale. Bend your elbows, exhale. Interlace and fill your lungs. Humble warrior as you empty chin toward chest, breathe in. Release the right hand down. Dragonfly, finish your inhale. Side angle, set it up as you empty. Find your full expression with the breath in. Last time, force those pulses, straight legs, or pulses in out. For five, for four, three, meeting in that crescent lightning or warrior lightning in one. Go for it. Take a breath in, finding that lightning warrior variation. Right knee to chest, reach the arms up, breathe in. Dance or pose on this side. Opening through the front of the right hip, maybe across the chest. Nice long inhale. Bring that right leg forward. Find your figure four on this side. See if you can come back to a longer rhythm of breath. It's still Ujjayi. Focus the eyes to one spot. Let there be a softness to the muscles around the eyes. Maybe the muscles around the mouth as well. Your option again is to hold onto something in front of you so that you can really just focus on that hip opening instead of forcing the body to work on your balance. One more long breath in. Stay here as you empty your right knee up. Inhale. Lightning chair last time. Interlace your hands, huge breath in. With the bind, fold 
forward. Release the bind. Bring your palms underneath your feet for gorilla pose. You can dig the fingers into the back of the, dig the toes into the back of your wrists. Bend the knees a bunch, pull the chest forward as you take a breath in. Keep the thighs connected to the chest, fold forward as you empty. We'll do that again with an optional lines breath. Inhale, chest and thighs are connected, but you find your half lift. Lines breath, stick your tongue out, cross your eyes. One more, breathe in. Release the bind. So come off of your palms. Step your feet to the back of the mat. Drop your knees down. Walk your hips back toward your heels. And just come up to a seated meditation, letting the eyes close. And notice the sensations in your body. You may feel a little bit of warmth or just a sense that there's more moving, right? There's more moving pieces. And as you settle in for a few more moments in a seated meditation and stillness, the visual that I always like is as if you shook up a snow globe, shook the heck out of it, and then set it down and just watched all of those little particles of snow swirling around, but slowing down and gently making their way to stillness. Letting things just naturally fall into place without trying to control it. Maybe even seeing some sort of beauty in the randomness or the not so randomness, just, just the settling of all of these different elements, all of these different variables without us exerting a bunch of control or micromanaging where things land. There's nothing that you need to push away, no thoughts that you need to fight off here. Just continue to sit back like you're watching that snow globe. You're ready, you can blink the eyes open. We're gonna set up for a half camel here. We'll look over your left shoulder, let's start with the left side. Bring your left hand back down behind you. It's a little bit different than a regular half camel. Reach the right arm up and then lift the hips up. Gently lower the hips back down. Look toward your right, right hand down, left arm and hips lift. Come back to center and then swap it out. So inhaling as you lift the hips, exhaling as you lower through center. A couple more, breathe in, and breathe out. Sometimes we call this dancing camel. Inhale one more to the left, exhale one more to the right. Come back to the center, bring your knees to hips distance. Some are a little wider, tuck your toes under, and then stand up onto your knees. Thighs are parallel, shins are parallel. Bring your hands toward your low back, like you were gonna stick your fingers in pockets, and then pull the elbows and shoulders toward one another here. Engage your glutes, so squeeze your butt a bit as you start to tip backward, but continue to press the hips forward. Glutes are still activated, not forcing. Deep, deep, deep breaths here. Stay here with your right hand where it is. Maybe you reach the left arm up. Maybe you draw that left arm way back. So you're back in a half camel. I actually like to make a little fist with my right hand and press that against the sacrum so that that right wrist feels more comfortable. Nice long inhale. And then bring your hips to your heels. Untuck your toes, find child's pose. One breath here. Back up to your camel setup, toes tucked. This time, left hand to your lower back, reach the right arm up. Make a fist if you're like me and your wrist does not want to be in that flexion place any longer, but keep the glutes up. 
did. Remember, you could just be reaching straight up with the right arm. If it feels good in the shoulder, take that right arm back. Breathe big right into the center of your chest. One more long inhale. Release slowly. Coming to child's pose. You feel the rebound sensation of that stretch. And come right back on up. Last camel pose. So you can bring your hands right back to that position that we used at the beginning. You might reach your hands back toward your heels. If you want, if the heels are a little too far away, you can tuck the toes and catch the heels there. We'll just bring the heels a little closer to your hands. Glutes are still active. Press the hips forward. If it feels great, you can drop the head back. Breathe right into the center of your chest, so that place where the ribs are knitting together. Let's see if you can surrender to the shape. Very activated. Activating back bend. Meet it with your breath. One more nice long inhale here. And gently tuck the chin. Find a seated meditation, bringing your palms face down on your thighs. Nice grounding energy with the hands. Back bends can stir a lot up physiologically, bringing the spine into that much extension. It's a lot on the nervous system. And then energetically as well from kind of that energy body, that chakra system. We're really moving those wheels of energy in the opposite direction as a lot of them are habitually moving in. So again, like you shook a snow globe up like you <laughs> crazy, crazy shake of that snow globe and then you just set it down and watch. You feel grounded, you can turn your palms to face up, relax the shoulders, relax the neck, relax the jaw. And gently start to extend the legs out in front of you. We're actually gonna kind of shake it out a little bit. Let's uh, take Baddha Konasana, down angle pose, bring the soles of the feet together. Bring your hands to your ankles, neutral spine to start. So after that extension, we want to give the back some more time in a nice neutral shape. And then once the back feels calmer, you might start to bow forward, dropping the chin toward the chest. Lift the head, bring the knees toward one another. Take your time to roll out nice and slow. I like to keep the knees bent here. Roll out onto your spine. Let the shoulders relax down underneath you. It feel good to toggle the knees side to side gently, maybe staying within a really small range of motion here. Eventually, finding a final resting shape. Shavasana, or legs up the wall, or even keeping the knees bent. Somewhere where you can let all of the efforting kind of drain down out of your body into the floor underneath you. Let go of any control of your breath. Give yourself permission to be in this space resting so that your mind and your body and your spirit can integrate your practice. So we'll be here for just about 30 seconds together. You know, listen for my voice shortly to close, or if you have more time, go ahead and shut off the video and linger as long as it feels right.
When you feel ready to move on with your day, give your head a gentle little nod side to side, maybe circle the ankles, wiggle the toes, reach the arms back up over your head as you slide your feet down underneath your knees if they weren't there as you breathe in. And then roll over to either side, pausing in the fetal position just for a moment. Let your body adjust to that posture. And then press up to a seat, bringing your hands over your heart with the fingers spread, palms open right over your heart space, right? connecting to this source of energy, this huge, huge part of just being a living human. Plug into that for a moment. See if you can breathe into that space and offer that heart space energy to yourself, trusting that as you do that, you'll have more to share with the people around you, the communities that you're a part of. A cleansing breath into that energy together. Inhale deep, let the shoulders shrug toward the ears, sip in as much breath as you can at the top. And then offer it up. Thank you for sharing some space and time and energy with me. I hope that that practice serves you well. Take good care of yourself and hopefully I'll see you again soon.